people really are that hungry for country music, they have to seek it out and go and find it. Um, I think there are, there are some folk artists that are making country or sounding records than country artists are making right now. I'll listen to like a Brandy Carlisle record, and to me that sounds way more country than anything I can hear when I turn on a country station, and that's what I choose to listen to. And when I make my own records, you know, I'm always going to have a bit of a mainstream influence in my music because that's how I came up through the trenches was doing that. <laughs> Now that sound has changed a little bit for mainstream country, but I'm kind of being stubborn about it, and and I still have fiddle and steel and stuff like that. And making this classic record to me was, it was a labor of love, and it wasn't that hard to do because I love it so. It it felt so natural. It was the songs that I love to sing that I I feel like my voice was made to sing. Well, you know, I, I didn't intend on thumbing my nose at anything. I I feel like it was a real honest authentic place that I was coming from and I was given the opportunity to make this record at, the t at this time by the record label and I wanted to do it five years ago but you know when I left my major label deal in the states we basically needed to get get things roaring again at radio in Canada so I did two albums of original material and then they came to me with the classic idea and I said well I've wanted to do this forever so I, I jumped on top of that opportunity and, and we got it done in, a, in record time you know sometimes when you do something out of feeling and go with your gut and you don't overthink it or think about it too much, it could be one of the best things you do. And, and the, the early feedback is humbling. Like, I, I, I'm blown away with some of the things people are saying about it. So I just, they, uh, they just went into the Grand Ole Opry membership mailboxes last Friday, so a lot of them probably won't get them for another couple weeks. But uh, I've, I've gotten some really great industry uh some really great industry compliments from friends in the industry who say, this is a record I'll actually listen to. The guy who played guitar on the album, Brent Mason, he plays on everything in Nashville. I sent all the musicians a copy of the album. I've never done that before. He got his copy and he texted my uh, co-producer and said, this is the best album I've heard all year. Amazing job. And I've never, I've worked with Brent since 1995 in the studio and he's never said that. So this kind of stuff is like, it's just like, yes, they did the right thing. It was the right thing at the right time. I do call her Reams. <laughs> oh, Terry Clark, you're so silly. <laughs> um, I have a history with Reba, a, a fairly lengthy one, actually, that started when I was about 15 and I joined her fan club. And... Uh, my mom got me a t-shirt that said Reba McIntyre on it and ordered it from her fan club and it was under the tree one year and I just about lost my mind over that. Used to wear it to school and that was like 1983. So people were like, who's Reba McIntyre? Now she just goes by Reba, like the world knows Reba. But I had like an early premonition she was just going to be the biggest thing. I said, you just wait, you'll know who she is, you know. And Anyway, and then I moved to Nashville and I was working at a boot store selling boots and she walked in with her two-year-old son at the time and husband to buy a pair of boots and my face turned white and I told the other two salespeople that this was my customer and you guys don't even make a move. So I sold her uh, Shelby, her son Shelby, his first little pair of cowboy boots and then um, I, I told her what a big influence she was on me and I'm sure she's standing there going, yeah, every sales girl I want run into or waitress is telling me this and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I'm just another one and and I vowed to myself the next time I see Reba McIntyre, I'm going to be somebody she will remember and the next time, uh, the next time I saw her was after she asked me to go on her tour with her <laughs> So and she handed me an 8x10 of Shelby in those cowboy boots that he signed to Terry Love Shelby. Still got it.